I was born on the 15th of October in 1923 in Santiago de las Vegas, Cuba. My parents, Ivan and Mario, were Italiano scientists studying in Cuba. I returned to Italy in 1925. My interest in stories made me the black sheep of the family. I love Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book. I also enjoyed the Americano movies and cartoons. In 1941, I attended the University of Turin and transferred to the University of Florence in 1943. I went into hiding after refusing to join Benito Mussolini's army and joined, and joined the Italiano resistance. In, 1940, in 1942, my first novel, Il Centuro di Aminiti de Ragno, The Path to the Nest of the Spiders, started my neorealistic period. Ultimo Veri Il Convo, The Crow Comes Last, was my collection of stories based on wartime experiences, which was published in 1949. My defective realist period was from 1947 to 1954. The White Schooner, Youth in Turin, and The Queen's Necklace were my three novels. I died, in, I died on September 18, 1985, due to a cerebral hearing. After being born in 1903 into the Russian Empire or present-day Dagov Pils Lativa, Mark Rothko moved to the United States when he was 10 years old. Soon after arriving, he attended Yale University but had originally majored in engineering and law and just before graduation abandoned these two majors to pursue a different path. He later moved to New York City where he studied under Max Weber at the Art Students League for a short time. He first began to paint his early paintings that were oriented to social themes and showed expressionism and surrealism. It wasn't until the 1930s where Rothko's brilliance was exhibited in one-person exhibitions and in group exhibitions with a group called The Tent. The ten consisted of Elia Batowski, Ben Zion, Adolf Gottlieb, Lou Harris, Ralph Rosenberg, Louis Schenker, and Joseph Solomon. Their sole mission was to protest against the repute equivalence of American painting and literal painting. But soon after this, Rothko's artistic style began to change from his urban life scenes with a sense of mystery and isolation to timeless post-World War II themes of survival and death. He also began to include concepts drawn from ancient religions and myth. He began painting biomorphic forms that suggested otherworldly plants and creatures. In the 1960s, Rothko's painting style began to change yet again as his death drew closer and he began painting in darker colors such as maroons, blacks, and brown. In 1968, Rothko suffered from depression and was also diagnosed with heart trouble. He later committed suicide in his studio on February 25, 1970, and his nearly 800 paintings were divided between his family and music. Before his death, Rothko was commissioned to create a group of murals for the Four Seasons restaurant in New York, Seagram Bill. He wanted to make the murals cause people to lose their appetite as they entered the building, but then soon decided to withdraw from the project and it was never complete. Rothko was also commissioned to paint a series of paintings for a non-denominational chapel in Houston, Texas. And after consulting the chapel's architects, the chapel was the ideal space for contemplation of his stark yet immersive canvas. The chapel is now known as the Rothko Chapel that was commissioned by John and Dominique de Menil. It is now not only a place of non-denominational worship, but a place for Rothko's art to be forever preserved and viewed by all. Hello everyone, I'm Jasper Jones. You're probably wondering about my art and how I became one of the most famous modern artists in the world. Well, follow me as I guide you through what exactly has made me who I am today. I was born in Georgia in 1930, and I grew up in South Carolina. I served for two years in the Korean War, after which I moved to New York where I met two of the most important people in my life. The artist Robert Rauschenberg, and the famous Dada artist Marcel Duchamp, known for creating charming works like these. His whole concept of changing the way people looked at art affected me so much that to this day my work is sometimes classified as Neo-Dadaist. 
But enough about all that, let's talk about something more interesting, my art. My art is fascinating, and I'm going to cover just a few of the basics of it. This is a famous work of mine, it's called Map. It should be familiar to anyone in humanity since a large copy of it is in the front of the room, so I guess everyone, except for that guy over there, should probably recognize it. It's one of my more famous works because not only is it one of my earliest, but it also very clearly represents my artistic goals to take something that people already understand and don't think twice about and to make them look at it in a new way. This is another work of mine. It's called Flag. It's my most famous work. I painted it in the 1950s. This work is called False Start. It's one of my more recent works and it's also very famous because it's sold for $80 million, making it the most valuable artwork by any living artist in the world. I've always believed that the process of creating is true art. My artwork is simple and everyday seeming, but if you look more carefully at it, it's very out of the ordinary. I always do and redo the same works trying to be perfect. I'm famous partially because I bridge the gap between abstract expressionism and pop art, making me without a doubt one of the most influential modern artists. One of my biggest accomplishments was winning the Medal of Freedom from President Obama in 2011. I'd like to tell you more about myself, but I'm afraid I have to get going now because even though I'm 84, I still actively create art. So I'll see you later. Twas a cold night my son Benjamin Britten was born. Kind of like a night like tonight. Oh, November 22nd, 1913. The night when a wonderful composer was born. It is so cold in here. Ugh. Benjamin! Turn the heat for your poor mother here! Benjamin! Oh, where is he? I've got it, he's gone! I must go and find him! London? Well, what am I doing in London? How did I get here? I didn't like take a plane or something. Oh, but I love London. This is where my son attended the Royal College of Music in 1930. Oh, he studied under Harold Samuel and Arthur Benjamin, who raised him up to be quite the musician, I will say. What am I doing in New York? Have I got a man? Is this some kind of time travel? Oh my gosh! Well, I love New York, and in 1939, my son Benjamin travelled here with his man friend, Peter Pears, and he was he came here to compose for some documentaries and films. He did um, an opera called Paul Bunyan, and... Well, sadly, he was disenchanted, and so he returned home to Suffolk in 1942. Oh my gosh, what kind of dream is this? Well, outer space kind of reminds me of some of my son's compositions, such as War Requiem and Midsummer's Night Dream. You know, they're, they're classical, yet they're modern. They're way out of this world. All day looking, and I still managed not to find my son. Oh! Whoa! Mom, how did you get here? What? Benjamin? Was that was the year when you created Owen Wingrave, that the the opera that that was on the BBC, the first made for TV opera. I just met you, and it's 12.53 a.m., and I'm working on this project. Here's a telecar, Vino. Mm -hmm.